Hey, um, welcome to our talks. So this is Ricardo, I'm Antoine. Hello. Uh, we are both uh, software engineers at Blablacar. Uh, if you don't know Blablacar, it's the, it's the largest um, platform for carpooling. So it's building a product to go from one place to another by going into the car of somebody else. And um, it's currently trying to like, focus uh, its product on uh, building like, features really um, that require a lot of technical challenges. Um, so in this talk, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about API design. Um, and we are going to talk about that in the context of uh, Blabla Lines, which is um, a product that Blablacar is building to focus exclusively on, um, on, uh, on commuting. So it's going from, from home to work. So our setup is um, a typical, typical startup. Um, we are basically just building a product for iOS, uh, an app for iOS and a, an app for Android, but it's the same product. Um, the back end and the front end are, are written from the ground up, so we don't have any legacy to deal with or any other APIs or things like that to deal with. Um, we are a really small team, like about four people. Um, we, we have very limited time and, time and money constraints. And the goal is really to go fast, um, try to find the market fit, and for that we have to go in one direction, go in a different direction, and be able to really move things quickly. Um, so I'll just introduce the, the product for the sake of, um, of the rest of the presentation. Um, so on the left, you can see the home screen of the app, which is uh, just showing you your schedule for the week. So you're, for example, you're going from work to home every day at 7 p.m. and you're going from home to work every morning in, at, at 9.30. And so the app knows your addresses and based on that, it will uh, offer you to pick up passengers. And that's the, that's the screen on the right. So passengers also have entered their commute. And um, we do some matching based on geography and routing and, um, and offer you the best matches for, for doing your, your, car, your, your commute. And then you can accept or refuse this passenger and, and so on. So in terms of uh, the overall architecture, it's at a very high level, it's just a client server, right? Um, they are communicating with an API. And so the server is supposed to encapsulate computation and uh, persisting sa states. So all the business logic really belongs on the server. And then the client is really um, uh, responsible for user experience. So really how to display things and how to have good interaction with, uh, with the user. And so from the start of this project, we found that the design of the API was really a, a source of fr friction for iter iterating quickly, uh, because it requires agreeing between the uh, people that write the front end and people that write the back end. And uh, generally, they don't, we don't really have the same view on what belongs in the API. So we've tried to come up with a philosophy on uh, how to design the API that is a bit different than, uh, than what people are used to in a typical like best practice REST. Um, API. So let's go back to the home screen. Um, I'm going to show what the API look li looks like in a typical data-oriented REST API um, for this kind of screen. Um, so typically, you'd have an endpoint um, get slash trips that will uh, return you all the trips that you have for the week. So here, it's still, it still it works pretty well. Um, you can see that you have uh, well just a list of trips and um, you know, they have data like, for example, the state and the departure time. And so as you use a product, actually, if you think about trips, just get me the trips, uh, it will give you more than just the trips you're interested in in the home. It will also give you the ones that are completed or the ones that were canceled, and those you might not want to display them on the home. So, So if the client wants only what he needs to display, and you know, as this, as this response gets larger and larger, you will be tempted to add some filters. And so um, you know, typically, you put them just in the, in the query string, for example, based on the date. So you only want the uh, trips that are uh, in the future, and um, only those that are waiting for passengers. And then you get the response you need for, for the home. So um, this is the request screen. So in order to display that, the client will need to find what's the next passenger request um, associated with, uh, with the trips that they have on the home. 
And so for that, if you follow um, REST best practices, you will probably have to do some uh, other calls uh, because the request is relative to a trip. So you'll go over all the trips and try to fetch the request. But even then, in these calls, um, you probably have uh, some stuff that you're not interested in displaying as well. For example, um, uh, requests that have been cancelled by a passenger or requests that have been accepted by a different driver. So you'll probably want to add filters as well. And then you'll iterate over the different trips and find the request that's interesting. Okay, That's not the best API design even for REST, but that's just an example. So then when, once you have the request, you're not even really able to display the, the screen yet because you have to go and fetch um, the user associated with it. So the point of that is just to illustrate that uh, for, for products like the ones that we are building, this kind of API isn't really appropriate, actually. It's not the simplest thing we can do. Um, right. And um, for, for our case, we think this example is not appropriate. Because a lot of the things that are happening here that Antoine was showing uh, are happening on the client. So it's the client job, for example, to decide uh, what filters to apply to the, to the endpoints to get the, the data it needs. So uh, for home screen, for example, you need to apply the filters to the trip endpoint to get the trips to be displayed on the home. Um, in the case of that example, uh, it may need to make multiple server requests to get all the information that it needs, so to get all the, the to get to find the active request. Uh, once it has one, to also get the user information and so on. So it, this may lead to several requests being done to the server. And once you get that data, there is a lot of information there that you don't need uh, on the home screen. And so you also need to do tr the, the transformation logic to display that data into content and grouped uh, in a way that makes sense for, uh, for the driver. And finally, we still have to handle what kind of information that user is allowed to see. For example, uh, we may not want to show the passenger's phone number until it's appropriate to do so. And if we're sending out the data, the server has uh, very little to, 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 to work with to decide whether that is information that we can send or not. Uh, so really what we are discussing here in this, uh, in this session is where can we put this business, this business logic? And if we think of the example uh, we've been discuss discussing so far, we can think of it in terms of three layers. Uh, a data layer on top, a uh, presenter layer in the middle, and this view layer at the bottom. And what is happening here is that we have this presenter in the middle that is getting, um, is, is, is in charge of deciding what kind of data it needs to send down the view uh, to the client, uh, Android or iOS, uh, and for, for the user to see the appropriate content. So in a nutshell, basically, uh, the question we are posing here is, okay, where does this presenter go? And again, still in our example, uh, if we are having the server client uh, architecture, we have to put this on the client, right? So it's the client deciding what kinds of trips it needs to display on the home. But if we have Android, iOS, and potentially another uh, platforms, we need to duplicate this, this uh, logic for as many platforms as we are supporting. Uh, one alternative to this would be to use some cross-platform solution like React Native, Flutter, Xamarin, or something else. Uh, we are not here to discuss this. It's not a point to discuss whether this is appropriate or not. For us, uh, we decided that it was more appropriate to go the native route, so we decided to have an Android native app and an iOS native app. Um, so instead, what we decided to do was to move this uh, presenter logic to the server. How did we do that? So there were a number of things that we changed from the example we presented. Um, First, the endpoint itself, instead of having uh, query parameters, we now made them, uh, we now made endpoints that are specific for the context or for the screen we are dealing with here. So for the home screen, um, what we are having now is a specific home endpoint that then tells the server exactly from where the client is calling, uh, is requesting information. So in this case, the server now knows that the client is requesting trips to be displayed on the home and therefore can decide which filters to apply for us. So now it's not anymore the client's responsibility, it's the server who decides, okay, I want trips to be displayed from today and only in a waiting state. But this is not a client concern anymore. Similarly, if we have a history screen, we can, do, we can add another endpoint for that context 
and let the server decide which are the appropriate trips to be displayed on a history screen. Um, for the response, now we don't need, uh, if, if, for the response and in the context of this home uh, slash trips endpoint, we now don't need all this data. We can, instead of having trips, the full trip object, we can have a trip summary and send only the information that needs to be displayed on that screen. Uh, we do this for a number of reasons. Um, some of the formatting of the content can now be done server-side, so we can reduce that logic uh, on the client. Um, also, it's easier to control what kind of information we are allowed to send to the server in that context so that it can be displayed to the driver. Um, it's also easier to add information later if we're iterating over this API uh, instead of removing fields that have been added and uh, that are already being used by other, uh, by other versions of, the, of our clients. Um, there is also less need to map server objects to client objects. We are getting already a much more digested um, version of it. And as a bonus, we get more compact responses that are easy to deal with. Um, we now need to handle um, more information that about what is happening. So we need also to, like, for example, in this case, tell the client what are the actions that uh, the client is allowed to perform on a trip. In this case, cancel or change the time of a trip, for example. Um, we can, in addition, send the logic about how this information should be grouped. So here we can do the grouping by date also on the server. And on top of all of that, we can also send the request that needs to be displayed to the driver to approve or reject uh, as needed. So um, basically here, instead of having several endpoints for the different things that uh, we are providing to the client, we call this one endpoint that the server now knows the context of and can then decide to send all the information that the client needs to deal with what is happening for that driver. Um, so for the client, a lot of this becomes uh, really good to work with. So we have a much more, um, a much simpler uh, business logic to work with, which leads to an easier uh, app to develop, to test and maintain. Um, there is less um, updates to do on the app to update uh, based on product decisions that can now be done on the server side. And in the end, this leads us to focus more on the UX, on the user experience, and provides our users with um, with a, a better experience using our apps. This, however, comes with trade-offs uh, for the server. So the biggest challenge for the server, I'm the backend developer, by the way. So, um, the, the biggest challenge for uh, backend developers is a bit of the par paradigm shifts that, is, that it um, forces us to do. Um, you, you're not doing normalized REST anymore. You are doing whatever works so that the client doesn't have to duplicate the logic. Uh, our goal it was not really to to remove coupling. It's just to um, you know make sure that the business logic doesn't land on in in the client and has to be duplicated be between multiple apps. Um, so we had what we had to do in order to make that work well was to uh, really separate the presentation layer from the data layer. Uh, you like this is just best best practice, but sometimes it's not that easy to in, to, to enforce. The presentation layer itself uh, isn't very interesting code. It's just like putting things together so that the client is happy. So, um, you know, nobody really wants to do that work. So we kind of share this responsibility between the client team and, and server team. And, um, but the good news is that SQL is really actually a really good tool to do these kind of things. So, so it's actually not very difficult to do that on the, cli on the server. It's actually much easier than doing that on the, on the client. Um, one of the big drawback is that um, we are not building a generic API. We are not doing an API. I don't know if some of you were at Oliver's talk right before, but really he, he was focusing on, um, on APIs that reduce coupling between clients and, and servers. This is really not a goal that we have. If we wanted to build a, a, a public API for, for this product, uh, we'd do things completely differently. I think this needs um, you know, a lot more effort. And so it's, it's more difficult. It's, it's cleaner, it's nicer. But uh, for us, the goal is just to be quick, have a product. So we didn't try to go the full rest, like really nice rest way. Con conclusion for the team. Um, so there are implications for the team. As I said, client developers really have to, to get involved into um, you know, contributing to this presentation layer. If there's a UI bug, something that gets displayed that shouldn't be, uh, then usually the, the, the front end team can just, front end people can just jump in and, and, and fix the issue. Um, 
So the backend developers in, in ideally can still focus on like backend problems, which are, you know, how do you um, persist states and how do you implement like complex business logic, complex algorithms that support the product. So it's worked really well for us. Um, you know, we'd be happy to discuss our experience on that. Uh, it worked really well for us. Uh, we don't know how well it would work for, for larger organization. I think in some cases it's just better to go the, the nice, clean, rest way. If there are any questions, feel free to come uh, to us. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, so um, to me, GraphQL is more... Um, so GraphQL kind of answers uh, w one of the concerns that is like, how do you get aggregated um, responses uh, that are just have the fields that you want. But uh, for us, it's really, you know, it doesn't, you, you still have the logic of w what to display actually, it's still on the client. So for us, this was al also a concern because that also gets duplicated. It's less, less code, but it's still duplicated. In this case, uh, so our, uh, the way we've been dealing with that is just to make all the APIs backward compatible still. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> it's too much work. Yeah. Any other question? All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.